Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel from Evelyn and Peter, and today I have the long awaited Daisy Day tote bag. Here she is. So, you might recognize these cutie little flowers from my Daisy Day throw that I released last year um and i want to expand that daisy day collection so here is the tote bag um this one uses line brand rewind yarn i love this yarn it's a super soft tape like yarn and you will need three different colors for it obviously so all of the exact colors and the exact yardage is available on my blog post um, that is linked in the description and so it'll show tell you exactly how much um, you need for every single color and then um, it's also available as a kit so if you're gonna buy the yarn I recommend recommend getting the kit because they toss in the pattern as well so you'll get the pattern for free they give you a link to the pdf download um, and that is the download that has no um, ads or anything like that so if you prefer to be able to print your pattern then i recommend doing that they give you that with the kit and then you can also change up your colors as well so if you wanted to change the color of the flowers or the color of the bag you can do that um, with the yarn options that they have on their website so i'll link to that in the description and then if you are on my newsletter then i always send out when they're having really good sales so if they have like a 35 percent off sale on kits i will let you guys know um, and so you get the yarn on sale and then the free pattern so it's a really good deal um, so I will link to that for you and then it's also available on Etsy and Ravelry so I'll put links for that as well and then obviously it is free on my blog um, the way that this tote is made is in two separate panels from the bottom up so just a little bit about the construction of the bag you're going to be starting on the very bottom which will technically be the bottom of the bag and then for this particular um, chart if you are reading the chart that is within the pattern you'll be starting you'll see where it tells you to start in the bottom left corner and then you are working from left to right and then right to left um, and then just working all the way up the panel in row seven we will have to do just a tiny bit of shaping so we will be extending the sides of the panel so rows one through six in the chart and then row seven we will be doing some foundation stitches to extend both sides by six single crochet that's what gives the shape of the chart kind of like a really giant fat t it cuts out those little corners on the edge you'll see it when you're looking at the pattern so that shapes the bottom of the bag if you're confused as to why it looks like that it is supposed to look th like that it'll shape the bottom of the bag and give it um the depth that we have on the sides here of the tote bag so and then also there's a, the written pattern is obviously if you don't even want to look at the chart you don't have to you can follow along with the written pattern and it'll tell you exactly how many um, squares of each color to make and each square on the chart counts as one single crochet so it will say like 7a 4b 2c and that means to make seven single crochet in color a and then four single crochet in color b and two single crochet in color c so it'll give you all the information right there in the written pattern and then you can cross check all of that with the chart as well if you think that oh something on your work is looking a little funky then i recommend making sure that it lines up with the chart so you can easily double check and see as you go so you just make two panels exactly the same and then we will be doing some seaming together you just seam down the side on both sides and then along the bottom and then you will sandwich it together and seam um, the little corners that we shape out together as well on both sides so you'll do that um, on the inside of the bag and then obviously you have to make two straps these straps are made with the thermal stitch so they are really really secure that's why i picked this stitch you could um if you did my uh willow wanderer tote then that is the same stitch that i did on that one uh so super sturdy and then you can also see that it is sewn far down in the bag here and that also helps to keep the bag uh, nice and sturdy and not stretched. So highly recommend to do this as well. Make sure you follow along with this part that you place your um, straps far down on the inside of your tote. And then 
Um, I, anytime I make a bag, I always get people that ask questions about, do you line your bags? Do you not? I don't ever line my bags, um, but I have a better solution if you don't want to line your bags either. Or you don't have those sewing skills because I don't have the sewing skills. Um, and so you can go and get a bag insert and you can order these anywhere like off of Amazon. Um, they have plenty. And so you can stick this in the bottom of your tote and it gives it the nice little shape on the bottom. And then you can put all your stuff uh, in it. I just have like my hooks and everything. I've been using it as a whip bag. Um, so it's got little pockets and stuff like that to keep everything organized. This is from Amazon and I will link this in the description as well for you guys. Um, other than that, Oh, I did want to point out about carrying your yarn as well. So we're going to carry along colors A and B, which is the brown and the white, and we're going to work directly over that yarn as we go um, so that there's no floats on the inside. I don't like having floats on the inside of my bag um, just in case they snag or anything like that. So you're going to crochet directly over it. Um, you can see here, like this is the inside of the bag and there's no floats because I worked my stitches directly over um, the yarn that I'm carrying. So just make sure you do that as well. You'll see it in the video. And then for color C, the yellow color, I do not carry that color um, because it's such a small amount on each flower. I just leave the yarn where it is. And then when we come back the other way, we'll just pick it back up um, and use it in the next stitch that we need to. So because it's right there in the same uh, section, it doesn't really create any floats. You can just pull it directly over. You can see here, you can see where I've lifted it up and there's like, it just looks like part of the stitch. So that won't snag or anything. So I recommend doing that as well. Um, but other than that, I think that is all you need to know. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope you guys like it. Um, let, you can email me if you have any questions. Um, if you want to leave your questions in the comments, I know other people in the community here are really great at helping. But other than that, thank you guys so much for all the support and I will see you guys in the next video. So to make your daisy tote, you're going to need bulky yarn. I'm using Line Brands Rewind Yarn. I really recommend this yarn for this pattern. It is a tape yarn, super soft and sturdy, and they have some cute color options as well. I'm using Willow, Citronella, and Elm, and all of the exact yardage that you need to make this bag is available on my blog, which is linked in the description. You're also going to need a six millimeter crochet hook, a needle to weave in your ends, a pair of scissors, and then you might want some stitch markers as well. So this bag is worked up in two identical panels and we're going to be starting on the bottom of the bag and working our way up. So you're going to be again with a slip knot. So just wrap your yarn around your fingers, pull that loop through and then insert your hook and pull tight to secure. And then we're going to be starting with row one on the bottom of the bag. If you're following along with the written panel and you are looking at the chart, this is the bottom row of the first chart and it is on the left hand side. We're going to read it from left to right and then right to left. So we're going to start off with a foundation single crochet and to do that you're going to chain two and then you're going to be putting your hook into that very first chain that you made in the back bump. And this is basically just a combination of a starting chain and the row one. So rotate your work slightly and then insert your hook into that back bump might be a little hard to wiggle into this first one, but you don't want to make your chains too loose. So just go ahead and work it in and then yarn over, pull your yarn through and you have two loops on your hook and then you're going to yarn over, pull through the first loop only, and then you're going to yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook. And that is one foundation single crochet stitch. So now we're going to work our next stitch into the bottom of that one that we just made. So you're going to insert your hook under both of those loops. So make sure you get through both of the loops of the bottom of that stitch. And then you're going to yarn over, pull up a loop. You have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first loop only, yarn over, pull through both loops on your hook. And that is our second foundation single crochet. Again, insert your hook into the bottom of that stitch that you just made, being sure you're going under both the loops and then work another stitch. That is our third one made. 
Again, insert your hook into the bottom of that previous one, and then you're just going to continue in this manner to create the foundation single crochet row, which is row one. If you do not um, like to do the foundation single crochet or you're a beginner and you can't um, get it down for this um, amount of stitches that we're doing, you could always chain 51 and then work your single crochet into the second chain from the hook and all the way back down your starting chain for a total of 50 single crochet stitches as well. So it doesn't matter which way you do it, you just need to end up with 50 stitches, 50 single crochet stitches. But I do recommend learning how to do this because you will need to know how to do it um, for about six stitches later on when we are shaping the bag. Um, so I do recommend learning how to do this because you will have to know how to do it later on but if you prefer a starting chain you can do that over the foundation row okay so now we have a total of 50 single crochet and that completes row one and row one is considered the wrong side of our work so it will be what's on the inside of your bag and then you're going to chain one and turn and row two is considered the right side of our work. So this will be the outside of the bag when you are facing it. The chain one does not count as a stitch. So you're just going to be working a single crochet into that very first stitch. And each single crochet that you make is also one square on the chart. So if you're looking at the chart as you go, one square is one single crochet. So you're just going to continue working your single crochet stitches through the front and the back loop, just regular single crochets. And then when we get to the point where we're going to bring in a second color, I will show you how to do that as well. So we're gonna do a total of eight single crochet stitches using color A, which is this willow color. And then when we come into the ninth stitch, I'm gonna show you how to bring in the color B, which is the elm color. So just work eight single crochet and stop on that eighth stitch. And I will show you how to finish the eighth stitch and bring in a new yarn color. Okay, so we're gonna be bringing in a new yarn color. I have seven single crochet here, and now we're gonna do our eighth stitch, but it's gonna be just a little bit different when we join in color B. So I'm gonna show you how to bring in that color. You're just gonna insert your hook like normal. So just like you would any of the other single crochets, but then when you have two loops on your hook, instead of yarning over and finishing with the willow color, we're going to drop the willow color and we're going to bring in color B, which is the elm color to finish um, our work so that our working yarn will be color B. So you're just gonna bring it in and place it on your hook. And then I like to hold it with my two fingers here and then I like to hold the tail of the other yarn down with my other finger just to keep it out of the way. And then just pull through that last pull through with the elm color which is color B and then just give your yarn on the back a little tug to make sure it's all secure you don't need to pull it super tight but just a little tug just to make sure everything is nice and snug and then I'm going to take the tail of my color B and just tuck it to the side with my finger um, you can hold it however it's most comfortable to you and then for this panel we're going to be color uh carrying the color A. So color A and color B, we will always be carrying along with us. So we're going to work our stitches directly over that yarn. So it's really easy to do once you get going, you're just kind of pretend that it's not even there and you're going to be working your single crochet stitches over it so that you can bring it along with you as you go. So now with color B, put your hook into the next stitch. And then also just make sure the yarn for color A is on your hook as well. And I'm just holding it down with my finger. And then you're just going to work a single crochet like normal, but making sure that you're working over that yarn. And then yarn over, pull through with that color still. So we just worked one single crochet with color B and you can tug the yarn down to make sure it's secure in the back. It's kind of, it might get a little loose with that first stitch there. So you can just give it a little tug on the tail. And then we need to work one more um, square on that chart with color B as well. So insert your hook into the next stitch. We're making sure we're working over that yarn, but because we only need two white stitches here, we're going to drop color B and we're going to pick color A back up. And because we carried it along with us, now we can just place it on our hook and do that last pull through with color A. 
So now color B is dropped and our working yarn is color A, but we're still going to be bringing color B with us as we go and working our stitches over it. So make sure you place that yarn on your hook as you're working your single crochet stitches across. So for row two, which is the one we're on now, the only yarn changing that we're doing is these two um, stitches in color B. And then the rest of this row is just going to be in color A. So as long as you're putting color B on the back um, of your work and placing it on your hook as you're working those stitches, you will be good to go and we just need to carry it all the way across our work so that later on, um, when we have spots in the panel that have multiple areas where we need to change colors, our yarn will be right there ready and waiting for us. So color A and color B, you will carry your yarn. When we bring in color C, which is the citronella um, yellow color that we have in the middle of the flowers, you do not need to carry your yarn for that one. Um, you're going to just work your row in the area where the, with the stitches that require that color, but then you can just drop it and leave it um, and continue along with just the color A and B. And this is because there's no rows that have the citronella color in two different areas of the panel. So it's only used in a small section of the circle um, so we can leave that color. So just make sure you ca carry color A and B. And when you're working, you can see that it might get um, bunched up in the back of your work here like mine is. And to fix that, just give it a little bit of a tug like I just did, and it'll help pull that yarn um, through so that it's not popping out on the back side of your work. It's not absolutely necessary that you do this, but it just helps make the inside of your work look a little bit cleaner as well. So all you need to do is keep it towards the back of your stitches as you go, and then just give it a little tug at the end of the row and it will make sure that it's pulled through all the way. Just don't pull it too tightly. So I've worked all the way across here with um, carrying my yarn and we still have 50 stitches. I'm going to show you again along the back here you can see where I tugged it at the beginning but then you can see here it kind of gets a little bunched up and this is just normal when you work with it and you're going along with your stitches so just give it a little tug like I did here and it will pull it through again just make sure you're not doing it too tightly you don't want your work to get all rippled and pulled tight so you want to make sure that your row is nice and even and that it was just a gentle tug so now at the end of row two here, we also need to bring the color B back with us as we go so that it's on the other end when we need to switch colors. So you're just gonna leave it here at the end of the row and then chain one and turn your work to start off row three. And now we're going to be working with our yarn on the side that's closest to us because now we are facing the wrong side of our work. So when I say wrong side, that just means that it's the side on the inside of your bag and the right side, which was row two, is the outside of our bag. So we want all of our tails and everything like that to be on the wrong side on the inside of our work so that it's hidden and it's easier at the end when we are weaving in ends. So I'm gonna just bring my color B and place it in front of the stitch. And now you're gonna place it on your hook and then work your single crochet like normal. So again, we're just working single crochet stitches over it, except this time it's on the inside of our work here instead of on the other side. So I'm just gonna hold it down with my thumb and carry it as I go, so place it over your hook and then put your hook in the stitch and work your single crochet. So it might look a little bit confusing if you're new to color work, but I promise once you get going, you don't even notice it there. And you just work your stitches as normal, making sure that you just have that yarn carrying with you as you go. So there is an option to do floats here if you wanted to as well. So you would only work over it every few stitches. But for this um, project, I decided it would be better to work over the whole thing. That way you don't have floats on the inside of your bag because you don't want to risk that getting snagged um, or pulled on when you're putting things inside your bag. 
So that's why we carry our yarn. And if you didn't want to carry it at all, you would have a lot of ends to weave in because you would have to cut it and join it. Um, so we're going to just continue along working our stitches. And now I'm here at the other end of the panel and we need to add in four more white stitches here. So I'm going to finish off this next stitch um, by not finishing with color A. So again, insert your hook, pull up a loop, and then now we need to drop our color A, but we wanna drop it on the side closest to us because this is the wrong side of our work. So you'll wanna take that yarn and pull it in closest to you and then kind of cross it over and I like to hold it down with my thumb just to tuck it out of the way. And then we're going to pick color B back up and this is our working yarn now. And you're just going to finish that single crochet with color B by putting it on your hook and pulling it through. Again, you can give your color A yarn a little tug to make sure it's secure. And we did it on the side closest to us now because we're facing the wrong side of the bag. So now all we need to do is work our stitches and we still want to carry this color. So hold it with your thumb and make sure it goes on your hook as you put your hook into that stitch and then work a single crochet with your new color. And we're just working it over our yarn as we carry it along. Again, place that other color over your hook, then put your hook in the stitch, work a single crochet. And here's our third one, making sure we're working over the yarn. And then here is our last one in color B. We only need four of the stitches. So then we're going to drop color B. We're gonna hold it down with our finger, pull it towards the back of our work here. And then we're going to pick up color A and finish the stitch with color A. So you're doing the same thing as before. You're just tucking it to the um, same side um, of the work, the wrong side, so that it's all nice and hidden on the outside. So now you're just going to continue on with color A. And again, we're carrying color B with us and working our stitches over it. And you're just gonna finish out the row this way as well, just carrying that color along with you as you go. Okay, and then when we get to the end of the row, you're just going to chain one and turn your work. And then again, we need to carry up um, that color B with us. So now we are facing the right side of our work and behind us is the wrong side where our tails are. So we're going to take that color B and now we're gonna make sure it's still on the wrong side of our work and just tuck it to the back. And we're just going to work our single crochet stitches over it as normal, carrying it along with us as we go. So now we are in row four. And so we only need to make four single crochet stitches in color A, and then we need to switch out our yarn color with color B. So we are on our fourth stitch here with color A, and we need to drop that yarn color and pick up color B. So just leave your tail on the back of your work, pick up the second color and finish that pull through with it, and then work two stitches in color B, making sure you work over that yarn as you go so you can carry it along. And then because we need to switch back to color A, you need to drop your current color, pick color A back up, and then do that last pull through with color A. So there's some switching back and forth around the petals of the flower. Um, so work one more stitch with color A and then don't finish it through because we need to go right back to color B. So just drop your yarn, pick up color B, finish your stitch with color B. You can pull that other tail down a little bit if you feel like it looks loose, but don't do it too tightly. And then you're just going to continue with your stitches um, working over color A. So we need to do four more in color B and we're carrying color A along with us as we go. And most and these flowers mirror each other, so you'll need to do the same thing on this other side as well. So after we work four stitches in white, you need to drop your color B, pick up color A to finish, and then work with your color A for one stitch. 
drop it again and work with color B for two stitches. And then pick color A back up. And then finish out the row with color A. So around the petal areas, there's more frequent color changes, but then once you get into the main body of the flowers, there's a lot less color changes to do. So you just need to make sure you're carrying those colors with you as you go and just working single crochet stitches um, for each square on the chart that is provided. So go ahead and work your way down and then I will show you how to bring in a third color as well. Um, but I'm going to work my way up to that point and then I'll show you the shaping that we need to do. So you need to do six rows total here. So just continue following rows one through six of the pattern and rows one through six of the chart. And then I'm going to show you how to do the shaping that we need to do as well as bring in another color. So I will meet you back here after we have six rows complete. Okay, so now I have all six rows made of the panel and now is when we need to do the shaping. We are going to be extending both sides of this panel by six stitches um, to shape the bottom and the sides of the bag. So once you are finished with row six, you can just go ahead and fasten off your work. Um, and then you need to make sure that you turn your work as well and then set it aside. So you're just going to fasten off and then just like you normally would after finishing a row where you turn your work, just make sure you turn your panel and set it aside just for one second while we bring in our new piece of yarn that we're going to be joining. So just want to make sure when you join it back in that you're joining it on the correct side. So flip your work over and then just set it down and set it aside. So now we need to do a little bit of shaping and this is the point where you need to know how to do foundation single crochets. So if you decided not to do it at the beginning of the bag, you're going to have to learn it here, but it's super simple. So again, just start off by chaining two, insert your hook into the back bump of that first chain that you made. Again, it might be a little hard to wiggle it through here, but you don't wanna have a super loose chain. So just work your hook in. And then you're going to yarn over and pull a loop through. So just yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through the first loop only, yarn over, pull through both loops. That is one foundation single crochet. And the bottom of that stitch we just made, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Insert your hook into the bottom of that previous one, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. If you need to see me doing it slower, you can go back to the beginning of the video, um, but you are just doing this six times. So you just need six foundation single crochet stitches here. And then once we get our six stitches, we're going to be joining it back into the panel that we are currently working on. So here is our six stitches. You have the tail on the right side and we're just going to be joining in. So this is right where we fastened off and you're going to be joining back into that very corner stitch. So the very first stitch of row six, you're going to be just working a regular single crochet stitch. So you're gonna insert your hook and then just work a stitch as normal. You'll have to hold it down with your fingers here so it doesn't twist around. And then just work a regular single crochet. So you could have worked the color, you could have brought in color B and worked over it, but to keep it simple, I'm just going to bring it in with the next stitch here because we still need to carry it along with us. But now we're joined back in to our panel and we're just ne needing to pick up color B Carry it along with us as we go. We are facing the wrong side of our work here. So you need to make sure that you bring it through to the side closest to you so that you can work your stitches over it. So you have a total of seven single crochet and we need to make six more single crochet in color A. So we've done our six foundation. We joined in with one and now we need to make six more. So we're just going to continue working 
um, carrying color B with us as we go. So now we're going to be starting the second flower that's on the other side of the panel here. So this is why we have been carrying our yarn so that we can work two flowers at the same time without having to cut and join. So now we need to bring in color B. So we're going to tuck our working yarn towards the uh, front of our work, which is the wrong side. And then you are going to pick up color B, finish that stitch with color B, and then continue working over color A, carrying it with us. And we only need two stitches in color B before we switch back to color A. So we're going to be doing a total of 27 in the color A, and then we will switch back and do 10B, and then we will switch back and do 4A. Again, this is all in the written pattern. Make sure you're following along with that because I will not be showing the entire panel. But once you work out those stitches following along with the pattern as you go, I will show you how to finish off this row because we also need to extend it on the other side as well. So go ahead and work your way across carrying the yarn with you as you go and I will show you how to extend on the other side just like we did here. So now we need to extend this side as well, just like we did previously. We're going to be doing six more foundation single crochet stitches on this side. And then after that, that is all for our shaping and we will just be working um, stitches as normal. So this is just the small little bit of shaping we have left to do and I'm going to show you how to complete it. So chain two, you can forget about color B and just leave it hanging there going to chain two and now we're going to work foundation single crochet stitches just like we did on the other side. So in the back bump of that first chain that you just made, you're going to insert your hook. So just as we have done previously, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop only, yarn over, pull through two. That is one foundation single crochet and the bottom of that stitch that you just did, insert your hook, work a second foundation single crochet and the bottom of that previous one, insert your hook again, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. That is our third foundation single crochet and you're just going to continue um, doing the same thing. So it's exactly what we did at the beginning of the bag and exactly what we did at the beginning of this row, except this time we're just attached um, to the row still. But the stitches are exactly the same, just like we've been doing. So again, you just need six foundation single crochet on this side, and then that completes the row and we can jump right back into working stitches into the top of them as normal. So, so I will show you guys how to do that. So now we have 50 plus six on one side and six on this side for a total of 62 single crochet stitches. And this is what your stitch count will stay at for the rest of the panel. So you can go ahead and turn your work and chain one. And now we're just going to be working back down the row um, into the top of the stitches. So in that very first stitch, work a single crochet and then a second single crochet into the following. So just work one single crochet into the top of each of these six foundation single crochet that you made. And then you're going to work your next single crochet into the top of the main panel that we already have. So we're going to work our sixth one here. And then now work your seventh single crochet into that very corner single crochet. So you don't want to get confused with the little chain that we have there from when we made our stitches. So don't accidentally put a stitch into the chain. You just want six stitches and then work your seventh stitch into this corner stitch and then make sure you pick up your white yarn again as well. So we've picked up color B and now we're carrying it along with us. And we're just going to work our way across and do the same thing on the other side here. We're just treating them like normal stitches now of the row. You'll work all the way to the end of these foundation stitches. So now you can go back into switching the colors for the flowers and carrying it along with you. So we need a total of eight color A. So this is my eighth one, and now I'm going to finish off the stitch by dropping color A and bringing in color B, and we need six color B. 
So now I'm just going to continue working with color B, carrying color A as I go. And then we're going to be bringing in our third color. So work 6B, and then I will show you how to bring in our third color, which is color C, and that is the yellow, orangish color that is in the middle of all three of the flowers. Okay, so on our sixth stitch, we're going to finish it by bringing in color C. So just place color C on the hook and then just do a pull through with color C. Again, you can tug down on all of the tails and on the other yarn colors in the back to make sure it's secure and then tuck the tail out of the way of color C. And now we're going to be crocheting over color A and color B because we want to still carry those with us. So only when you're working with color C is when you're going to be working over two yarn colors. So right here we only need two of color C. So then we're going to drop it and now we need to bring back in color B, which is our white. And we need to do 6B just like we did on the other side. So once you drop color C, you can just leave it there. You're not going to carry it along with you because it's such an isolated area and you only need a small amount here. When we work our way back, we'll be able to just pick it back up and it won't leave a float. So you can just drop it and leave it there and then um, finish working with color B. So now when we come back, we'll be able to just pick it up and it only has to go up one row and it'll secure in nicely to the back of our work. So just make sure you leave it on the back of your work and then you can continue along with your stitches as normal, working color A and color B, carrying those, but just make sure you leave color C. When you get to the end of the row, you're going to be treating those six foundation single crochet on the end, just like you would any other stitch. So you're going to work all the way across, work your flower on this end. And then when you come to these six foundation single crochet stitches, just work into the top of them as normal. You will want to carry your white yarn with you here as well. So make sure you continue your white yarn all the way to the end and then just chain one, turn your work and work your way back. So you have six single crochet on the little end here, 50 in the middle, and we did six on the other end. So you'll have a count of 62 stitches. Um, and then just continue carrying your yarn as you go, working your stitches, following along with the written pattern, checking in with the chart if you prefer the chart. And I will check back in at the end of this panel so just continue as I've showed you, um, working our single crochet stitches and switching yarn colors, and I will meet you at the end of this panel. So now I have completed one whole panel here. So we have a total of 50 rows. So from the very bottom where we started all the way up to the top, we have a total of 50 rows. And now you can just fasten off your work here you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you leave a tail that's long enough to sew the sides of your panels together. So just pull through some yarn and then you can go ahead and fasten off. And now you're going to have to go back and make a second one of these panels. So it's going to be exactly the same as the first one with no changes. And you just wanna make sure you have two. So you can do the same exact thing, um, carrying your yarn as you go and working our stitches, following along with the written pattern. You can see here, I already have my second one made. So once you make your second one, um, I will show you how to sew them together and how to add on the straps and do all of um, the trim and everything like that. So go ahead and get your two panels made and then we can continue on with the rest of the pattern. Okay, so now that you have both panels made, we need to sew them together. So you're gonna place one of the panels down out in front of you with the right side facing up, and then the second panel down on top of that with the right side facing down. So you have right sides facing and the incorrect or the wrong sides of your work are on the outside. And now we're going to be sewing down the side of our panels from the corner here, right after we did the shaping where the foundation single crochet are and all the way up from that last row. 
So the last row made all the way down to the shaping in the corner. And you're going to be doing that on both sides. And then we're going to sew along the bottom here, just sewing rows one together from both of the panels. And then we still have these little corner L shapes that we need to sew, but we're going to be doing something slightly different. You need to sandwich those apart and then sew across, which I will show you as well. So first thing you want to do is sew down the side of your bag. You can sew your bag with whichever method that you prefer for seaming. I'm going to use my needle and then I'm just going to do an invisible join with the tail of yarn that we had left. So I'm just going to make sure that all of my rows are even. That's the most important part here is that on the outside you have your rows are even so that the distinct line in between the single crochet rows are lined up even on the outside of your work. So I'm just going to stick my needle through the very top last row of both panels and stick it through and pull and then come in from the other side from the other direction and do the same thing. So there isn't a specific stitch that you're sticking your needle in. You're kind of just working it underneath the edges of the rows here and picking up um, the yarn and pushing it through and then just pulling all the way through and tugging it tight. So just make sure that your rows are even. So you see when you flip it out that those rows are even on the outside and I recommend making sure you get nice tight even stitches you don't want to like skip any rows as you're working your yarn through because you want it to be really secure and not look like it has holes or anything so you're just going to work all the way down the side making sure it's even as you go and then repeat that on the other side as well so we have both sides sewn up and you're going to do the same thing along the bottom here and this time you have stitches along the bottom to work through so you just sew all the way along the bottom and we still have our work um, facing the wrong side out and now we need to sew the corners here so I'm going to show you how to do that we're still going to be using our needle except now we're going to sandwich it so you want to pull it apart and then sandwich the um, little L shape together and so the bottom seam of the bag is lined up with the side seam of the bag and you just um, want to make sure that that is even and then we're just going to sew this little line across here so you're just going to take um, yarn unless you're smart enough to leave a long tail um, when we joined in um, those panels and our shaping I did not think to leave a tail long enough to sew so I'm going to have to bring in a new piece of yarn and just sew across so same thing that we did on the sides and the bottom just work from one side to the other um, seaming this L shaped close so there's no stitches again here on this side that you're working into. You're just going to pick up that rewind yarn and make sure you're going through both sides and then just make sure it's even. So there's no like even rows on this end to uh, make sure that any everything's lined up. So you just want to make sure that it's even on both sides and that the seams are lined up, the side seam and the bottom seam. And you can see I'm just using the bottom of the foundation single crochet stitches from the shaping that we did and just pushing through the edges of the rows on the panel. So we're just going to work our way across and then when you get to the end you can just fasten off and then you'll want to repeat the same thing on the other side. So just go all the way straight through to the very end to close that up. Okay, so now our bag is seamed together. So now we need to add the one round of trim along the top, and then we need to add in our straps, which are really simple to do. So first I'm gonna show you how to do the trim. You're gonna take in a new piece of yarn, and then you can just join it into any stitch along the top of your bag. I like to join it in directly next to the seam of the side of the bag and just put it into the top of a single crochet stitch and then you're just going to slip stitch to join so yarn over and pull through and pull through the loop on your hook as well chain one and then just work one single crochet into each of the single crochet stitches all the way around the bag so we have 62 single crochet stitches on this first panel 
and then 62 single crochet stitches on the other panel. So we're just doing one round all the way around the top to give it a nice even trim. Um, I like to I like to pull my stitches a little bit tighter here so that it just keeps the bag nice and tight at the top. So just make sure you don't do them loose and then you can just slip stitch to join and fasten off. So now to make our straps, you're going to need a new piece of yarn for the tail of that yarn. Make sure you leave a long, nice length. I would say at least 18 inches in length of that tail because we'll be using it to sew later on and then go ahead and work nine chains. So just yarn over and pull through nine times. And then in the second chain from the hook, insert your hook into that back loop and work a single crochet stitch. Do the same thing in the following chain, insert your hook into the back bump, and then just work a single crochet and do this all the way across for a total of eight single crochet stitches. And then when you get to the end of the row, just turn your work in chain one. And now we're going to be beginning the thermal stitch. So insert your hook into the back loop only of that first single crochet. And then you're also going to want to insert it into the back of the stitch from the row below as well. And then just work a single crochet as normal. Again, in the back loop only of our single crochet. So instead of under both front and back, you're just going to put it under the loop that's furthest away from you. And then into the back of the stitch from the row below as well. So this makes a really nice and sturdy stitch for our straps. Again, in the third stitch in the back loop and then into the back from the row below. So when you're first doing these first few rows of the stitch, it might look a little bit confusing, but I promise once you get the hang of it, it works up um, and looks normal as you go. Um, so basically you're working single crochet stitches just like you normally would, but instead of doing it under both loops, you work it in the back loop of your current row and then the back of the stitch from the row below as well. So I'll finish off this row and then I'll show you what it looks like. And I'll show you again for a couple more rows, just so you can get the hang of it. It's really simple though. Um, and you're just going to have eight single crochet. For these straps, your stitch count is not going to change. Make sure when you get to the last stitch here that you don't miss it. It can look a little bit weird for the first several rows, like I said. As long as you have eight single crochet, you are good to go. So you see how it created like a little ridge along the back here. That makes a nice and easy stitch to insert our hook in for this next row. So turn your work and you're going to be putting your hook into the back loop of the current row and the back loop of the row below, just like you did before. So insert your hook into that back loop and then into the back loop of the previous row. So once you get that first row or two in, it gives a really nice defined um, stitch and you can easily tell where you're supposed to put your hook. So back loop and then in that nice back bump from the previous row. So you're just going to repeat this um, for several rows. I do not have a row count within the written pattern because it can sometimes be hard for people to count their rows with this stitch. So you're just going to use a measuring tape and measure out the length of your strap. So you're going to want to do it for about 24 inches is what you want the length. So just right before you hit 24 inches, um, you'll just want to measure as you go. And if you want longer straps or shorter straps, you can adjust that as well. When you get to the end of the row, just chain one and turn and continue repeating. So you're just going to repeat that same row over and over, working in the back loop and in the back bump from the row below. So you can just continue working these rows. I stopped just before I hit 24 inches in length. And then the final row of the straps will be slightly different and I will show you how to finish um, off your strap. So it's going to just be a little bit different than what you are doing now. So just continue repeating this until you have the correct length that you want for your straps. Okay, so now I have about 24 inches in length of the strap. We're gonna do the final row here. So insert your hook into both the front and the back loop of the current row, plus the back loop of the stitch from the row below. So exactly the same that you've been doing, except now you're putting it under 
both loops of the current row plus the back loop of the row below. And that just gives us a nice clean edge for our last row of the strap. You'll still have a total of eight single crochet stitches. And then you can go ahead and fasten off, leave a tail long enough to sew this side of the strap to your bag as well. And then you need to go back and make an entire second strap. So you can fasten off and then go back and rework the same thing all over again for your second strap. Okay, so all we have left to do now is sew our straps to the bag. I've already done one here and I'm going to show you how to do it the second one. So you can see that I have placed my straps about three inches down in length from the top of the bag and this is very important for you to do. And then we're gonna sew it in a rectangular or square shape almost on all four edges of the strap here. And we're gonna do it on both sides. So keeping it this far down from the top of the bag helps it to be sturdy and stretch less and just keeps your tote bag a lot more secure than if you were to place it at the top of the bag. So that's really important to make sure that you place it further down the bag on both sides. And then you also wanna make sure that the straps are even on both ends of the bag as well. I've placed the bottom of my straps at about the bottom of row 10 of the panels. Um, so that's a good way to keep an eye on it as you sew. You can sew along with the um, row that you're on to make it even. And then when you pick your placement for your straps, you just wanna make sure that the um, that it's even on both sides as well. So I placed mine in about four and a half inches in from the edges of the bag. So you can use a measuring tape and just measure it over and then get ready to place your straps. So you'll wanna just make sure they're even with the first side as well once you bring in that second strap. Um, and then it's also easy and uh, helpful to place stitch markers to hold your strap down as you sew it. That way you make sure you're not um, messing up or having it become uneven as you go. So I've just placed four stitch markers here, just keeping my straps in place. And then we're going to use our needle and our tail of yarn that we had left to sew the straps down on both sides. So I found it really easy to start along the bottom of my strap. So I'm just gonna use my needle, pick up the stitch from the panel, and then stick it through the first stitch of my strap and pull it all the way through and then just continue repeating that. So when you're putting your needle through the stitches on the panel, make sure you don't poke it through to the other side. You can see I'm just picking up a loop of the single crochet that's on the inside of the bag, being really careful to not stick it all the way through um, or to um, have my seam be showing on the outside. So we want everything to be done on the inside and I'm not skipping any stitches of the strap. We wanna take a lot of care to make sure that we're doing plenty of stitches so that the strap is really, really secure in there and it doesn't stretch or anything like that. So it just helps keep our tote bag nice and secure, work along the bottom, continuing along the top, and then you can work your stitches through the inside loops of the panel here at the top and joining it to the strap, and then along the last side at the bottom, and then go ahead and do the same thing on the other strap as well. And then you can just weave in all of your remaining ends using your needle. And that is it for this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will catch you guys in the next video tutorial.